And welcome back to another GAC podcast where we're going to discuss games, anime, computers, and collectibles, but not necessarily all of that in one week. I'm still your host, Harrison. To my left, Hi, I'm fast. And to my right, James. And we're going to talk about the news of the week. And I'm going to be starting off because, oh my gosh, video services, video services, and video services are dying around us. It's like it's October or something, you know, and mm-hmm. everything's dying. Um, <laughs> so this is this is the this fall is just like pairing off of all the dead weight anyway. Yeah. Well... The funny thing is, is one of these is going to potentially be resurrected anyways. But uh, two big things this week in regards to video services is uh, looks like Vessel was uh, purchased by Verizon. And there are some people out there who haven't heard of Vessel. But basically, Vessel's like uh, Vimeo or some of the other services out there. And there's been a lot of YouTube creators that had gone over there were using it as an exclusive platform to put out their stuff first before it hit, uh, before it would hit YouTube. That way there was like another source of income. And Verizon has bought Vessel and has now decided they're shutting it down October 31st. So we're losing another... Um, another video distribution platform basically that uh, some people did happen to like and so that means they're going to end up probably trying to go someplace else and the other one with this is vine vine is being shut oh, down yeah, by twitter by twitter yeah bought yeah. and shut down no no well it's been bought for a while yeah it's been bought for a while they're but, just shutting it down yeah they're shutting it down and i think what was funny about this was the uh the vine founder um apparently was very displeased or regrets having sold Twitter Vine in the first place. Um, and they were just such a sad looking picture of him on the internet <laughs> well, with was, the story. It was, it was pretty a sad to sell it. Yeah. So we're losing, we're losing vessel. Um, and then we're losing Vine. So losing the six second heroes and we're losing another paid platform. Uh, in the marketplace. So mm-hmm. surprising to hear with everything else going on out there that uh, that's happening. But there's potentially some good news. Um, Pornhub has made a statement saying that they would potentially be interested in buying Vine. And, you know, Pornhub decides mm-hmm. to be cheeky about it. And they said six, six seconds is more than enough. <laughs> right. Good one, Pornhub. Right? Yeah, that's a good one. Definitely. So, I think that's what people have been wanting to see on Vine, considering what goes on on Snapchat stays on Snapchat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the thing but about this these... one, you can share stuff and not feel ashamed. <laughs> the thing about these services <laughs> is, like, in the case of Vessel, I'd never even heard of it. But what I'd heard about Vine, I always kind of figured that's kind of like, okay, that's a space on the internet and those people can occupy that space and do as they wish. Some people were getting really creative with it, other people were just aping that or doing something even worse. So the fact that it's going away is kind of, you know, we're losing a, a source of creativity um, within that short format, which is um, a very important thing, being able to work in that inside that kind of limitation. Yes. Um, and we're losing that space unless people just kind of take it upon themselves to maintain that whole six to ten second micro video kind of thing and put it up on other services. Uh, in the case of Vessel, I've already gone through uh, stage six... Daily Motion, Viddler, Vimeo. So if Vessel came out and disappeared because, and I didn't even see it, I'm not surprised because they, it, I mean, every single one of them, it's like an MMO coming out trying to compete with Warcraft. It's just not going to work. YouTube owns video on the internet. Yeah, and this one, this one was interesting, especially because Verizon's the one trying to buy Yahoo, also has AOL. And so they've basically bought up a, another service and just shutting down the competitor. I mm-hmm. mean, just hard up shutting it down. And there's been a few YouTubers, I think Nostalgia Critic is one of them, who tweeted out after all this, goes, well, Vessel's going away. I guess we're going to have to move our our videos over to another secondary platform. And I think they were talking about actually moving them over to VidMe. Mm-hmm. And 
this I, I think is interesting because Vidme has been um, kind of becoming a darling here mm-hmm. within the last uh, three to six months. Yeah, a, a platform offering no censorship and basically putting creators in charge of their own creation. Yeah. Um, with very little in the way of contracts or terms of service other than don't be a dick, really, is from what I got of it. Yeah. And they're, they're really opened up to letting creators kind of work with each other and sort of establish alliances and things like that. So um, uh, we've been on, Vid, on VidMe for quite a bit now. Oh, month, I think month and a half, month I would and say. A half. Yeah. And this show has been going up there. Yeah. Uh, so, hi, thanks for watching. Thank you. Um, between VidMe and our YouTube channels, I hear we have just broken a... Rec- we just broke 100 subscribers. Nice. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Um, but again, thank you for watching. Thank you for that. Um, now, that said, um, once again, I've gone through all those other video services, and I've seen this before, of rapid, wide adoption of what is left, of what is what is available or what is popular. And so they're going to have to take some steps to make sure that they don't remain, that they don't just end up being flavor of the week. Because you know, all, it, all it takes is one other competitor to come out or YouTube flexing its muscles. Mm-hmm. and they're back in trouble again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my concern with this is, you know, it's like these other services being shut down, and then all of a sudden we have, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, them all going over to VidMe. You know, it's, mm-hmm. So VidMe's kind of been, you know, a place for censorship-free, and it's been a place a lot of uh, smaller YouTubers have been able to get in there and all work together, get a little bit more viewership and everything like that. And so my my concern is probably just a selfish concern, is hopefully uh, we don't get drowned out by the bigger established fish coming into mm-hmm. you know into this ocean. That's always a possibility, regardless of the platform. Yes, I mean you know you can get lost in. That's the major problem with trying to create content on YouTube these days is. You just get lost in the background noise. Yes. Unless you, unless you, for some reason, all of a sudden go viral or hit the lucky roll with their algorithm or whatever, you don't really get your, you don't really get your chance on YouTube, not anymore. Like it might have been originally, if people were just browsing around, they might bump into your video eventually. But there's just so much going up on YouTube now. I think the last thing I heard is like in the la- in 24 hours, more content will go up on YouTube than has ever been generated by any all TV networks combined since their inception. Yeah, it's. I mean, the places if you're just putting up videos on YouTube is it's all fine and dandy and it's good, mm-hmm. you know. And eventually, someone may discover it and it may be worth you know somebody's time. Yeah. Um, the the big thing there has always been uh, live streaming. You know, it seems like the live streaming is what's becoming more popular there, and they're competing very much with uh, with Twitch on that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. The, they, and, well, they, and they're coming in because Twitch, uh, Hitbox, Justin TV, like these services started up before YouTube was really even taking a look at streaming. It was because of these services that they started getting really serious about it and unlocking it for certain creators. And now, yeah, I mean, because they're trying to be this all-in-one platform, because Facebook is starting to take take part of the foothold there. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're going to see it's it's this sort of slow rumbling storm cloud that's kind of rolling over. And whatever you draw their attention, it just kind of like slurps over and absorbs whatever people are looking at because they want people's eyes. Yes. And, you know, we're str- we're trying to do that, too. We want people's eyes on us. Oh, yeah. You Definitely. Know? I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, sit here and be totally self-righteous or anything on this, and especially with the big creators, because they have established themselves. They, they have a good product, and they have worked for it. You know, mm-hmm. it's just <clears throat> part of it is, you know, the reality is people are – selfish and by me saying you know i'm concerned about the big creators coming into vid me yeah. is just me being slightly selfish you know but I, you have you have to protect your product we have to protect what we put together because we put a lot of time and effort into it right i mean we're sitting here in essentially a, a cobbled together studio with cobbled together studio equipment putting out something that we believe is a professional level of effort well, yeah, you know, that's you, that's really what people do. If, you, if you've read some of the comments from last week, you know, <laughs> yeah. we got somebody in their hate comments on on our on our stun gun yeah, video stun said, gun video, yeah. yeah, said that we're professionals. I'm all like, oh look, we're professionals now. <laughs> thanks but, for that. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. 
So no, we, um, I mean, we do try. I mean, we, we try to get better all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to get, uh, improve the equipment. We do try to, uh, improve everything that we can along the way as we're learning this process because you know we are bootstrapping this and mm-hmm. everything like this so it is a um a something where we don't see revenue from this this is actually out of passion right now this is not something we're doing for uh for the money you know if the money yeah. comes great but, but- Right now, we're not focusing on the money. I mean, this is hobbyist. This is skill uh, advancement for us. Yes. And that's because of all of the tech that we... I mean, if we'll share share out this eventually, but all the tech that is surrounding us right now, that's what it takes to operate on a level for people to notice you on YouTube. It used to be you just had a webcam. Yeah. You know, or, you know, later on a a camera on a headset or something like that. You didn't have, you know, professional level microphones. You didn't have three separate computers plus two in front of us and multiple cameras and lighting and all of that like you just kind of went with it and fixed things as it came and you know slowly it just became something you could do full time if you were good at it mm-hmm. though most people don't necessarily see all the multiple cameras that we're you know right? yeah. using and well, testing right now yeah 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 we're testing them right now <clears throat> yeah we we do we do some stuff we we over tech a little on the back end for future improvements but you know we at least have our baseline but together the is, there. I mean, we're always pushing our skill, and it is a bit selfish, but I like to think that we're also pushing our skill and establishing new um, levels of uh, quality and a new new content for you, the viewer, um, as much as we're doing it for ourselves. Because yes. in the end, we do need your eyes, uh, both to point out mistakes that we make or ways that we could do things better, but also to um, basically make sure that we succeed at doing this and letting us know, even just your eyes are the number climbing up to say that people are watching is encouragement to us. Yes. And even the trolling. Yeah. I mean, e- even the trolling. Oh us. yeah. Gosh. I, I, <laughs> that was fun. I was yeah. just like, I, I don't know if the guy thought he was going to like get like a rise out of me and get me angry or whatnot, but I'm all like, Ooh, this is fun. I'm going to poke back. And then it's like, comment, comment, comment. Yeah. I'm like, I just won. Yeah. <laughs> you reacted to me. <laughs> yeah. You came back and commented more. Thank you. So, yeah, it's it happens and perfectly fine with that. But one other thing that VidMe has done this last week also, this is you know developing, is um, they've started a verified creator tipping system. Mm-hmm. So now at at the bottom of the videos there is a tip button where you can basically tip a creator between one dollar and ten dollars. Wow. And yeah. That's interesting. So you can tip the creator and they end up getting 95% of the tips. So basically if you tip, uh, you know, if you tip a dollar, that creator is going to get 95 cents of it. 5% does have to go to VidMe for processing fees and everything else. And because, I mean, come on, they're putting they're putting up the videos. Uh, they're well, not putting up the videos. They're it's, hosting the videos. It's admirable to put that kind of thing out there, I will caution this, especially to the VidMe creators that keep track with us and everything like that. Don't get used to that 95%. I'm, I'm imagining, especially with a huge influx of people coming in from these other services, that's going to get adjusted rather quick. It could. Yeah. And they, they flat out said this is beta and this is how it is. And they and they already pre-warned that it's going to potentially adjust some. Yeah. Because uh, the- even Twitch subscriptions are like 60-40 or 50-50 or something like that. Twitch is about is favoring six, Twitch. Yeah, that that's yeah. that's Twitch. And but the donate button it on the donate button on YouTube is basically I think about I want to say about ninety two percent because they have basically the same model plus they have a slight processing fee on top of it. And they have way 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 more viewers. Yeah. So, but the donate button is basically a voluntary thing. For, you know so. It's just you put your money towards the towards the creator maybe as a one time thing of a certain amount, versus Twitch is a constant monthly subscription, and yeah, the Twitch one is seems a little unbalanced there, you know. But uh, it is what it is, and it's still you know reliable potential uh, money coming in. So I think that's all I got on the mm-hmm. on all this stuff. But uh, I guess for the you know. The video stuff, hey, VidMe, you're awesome. Yeah. VidMe community, for as quickly as you've been picking us up and everything, you're awesome. You are also awesome. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And the other creators on there in VidMe, 
those wascally villains <laughs> and their uh, their wonderful little podcast that they're doing of actual vidme content creators that's amazing watching this community of creators coming together and working together and everything you guys are awesome too so i'm gonna i'm gonna quit my shameless plugging and i'll let uh so what else do we got going on so, here this week? Um, there's more news returning about the video games voice actor strike that we covered last week oh, oh yeah yes Go on. um so the, the original thing was video game that voice actors going on strike because they claimed that the working conditions were unsafe, that they weren't getting paid a uh, proper amount for the content that they're creating because the contract hasn't been renego renegotiated in 20 years. And so they came up with these demands. And uh, since then, those demands supposedly have been kicked back. And so SAG-AFTRA, S-A-G-A-F-T-R-A, -A -A, I'm not going to even figure out whatever that stands for. You don't want to say that three times fast? No. Um, they basically decided right we're all on strike now a coalition of video game companies uh, including activision disney electronic arts and take two uh have basically launched a website criticizing sag aftra for their strike saying that they never bothered to get their members to vote on the counter offer that they had put forward because the counter offer they put forward as they point out on this site um sag aftra video mm -hmm. uh basically outlines how they were giving in to those demands that they were basically going these are reasonable yeah these are reasonable this is i mean you know these make sense it's okay we can we'll give into your demands and give you basically everything that you asked for and sag after decided to strike because it wasn't exactly what they asked for and See, mm, so i like so not, something was missing and he's like i wanted that now keep in mind this is re us reading you know news site after news site which might as well be bathroom gossip these days yeah. yeah. So, and there's a lot of he says, she said. Yeah, there's a lot of hearsay here. But the way this one sounds is basically, you know, they said, you know, uh, basically what the uh, the Actors Guild said, we want green M and M's, and the movie studios came back and go, look, we can't give you just green M and M's, but we will give you M and M's, and. They, just a multicolor M&M's. Yeah, it's like we're, we're, we don't have the time to separate out all these M&M's. We'll give you M&M's, you know, mm -hmm. and you can choose to have yeah, a green one if you want. Yeah. And they're like, no. <laughs> but, you know, again, part of this is, is basically, you yeah. know, that um, actually the the whole thing about rock stars asking for really weird shit like that is oh, to, yeah. is because they will always ask for one weird thing and it became a standard practice to make sure that their other demands, that they were actually being listened to as part of the venue because they would ask you for normal everyday pedestrian stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like we want some bottles of water and be able to, you know, have this much time to relax and in a smoking room or something like that. And then at the very end, it's like, and we must each get one peeled orange. And if they walked in there and saw however many peeled oranges, then they knew that they were being listened to. Yeah, it's just yeah. one of those things to make sure that your contract is actually being followed. Yeah, in which any good venue does. If you go to a hotel and say, I want this in my room, they're going to do their best to honor that depending on the hotel and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But generally there's a lot of stuff going on and you can see it on the internet about people asking for weird stuff and getting exactly what they asked for as far this as the true. hotel can fill it. So, you know, it, it makes sense. Now, uh, the, the other statement that, um, these, these, this coalition made, uh, kind of makes a little sense. It says a prolonged strike only benefits non-union video game producers and non-union performance interests within the video game in industry. It will also discourage an unorganized majority of developers and publishers from working with SAG-AFTRA in the future. So all this is really doing is making them look bad, is what they're saying. And I, yeah. I'm inclined to agree because, you know, the trouble with unions is they really do need to be working for the people within the union instead of the union's interests. And I think that this must be, that must be what's going on here. Yeah, well, yeah, basically the the game studios are accusing the um, the the union here of just going ahead and doing this without actually uh, talking with the other actors mm -hmm. that need to be represented and kind of uh, doing the choices without actually listening to them. So in that case, yes, it would make the union look bad, but this is also a posturing technique right now by the game studios to make the unions look bad, whether it's true or not at this point. Now, uh, one good bit of information out of all of this, and this is sort of like last week we covered one end, so now we're covering the other end. Yeah. Uh, one good information is, according to statistics and research and stuff on the internet, so it must be true, uh, less than 25% of the game 
games currently on the market actually feature content from union members. Um, so less than twenty five. Less than twenty five percent. A quarter of the games out there are from union members. But so we might not see too much of an of a uh, effect from okay. the strike. But we're talking less than a quarter. But the problem is, is that that quarter that you're going to see problems with the strike from is going to be the big uh, ones. The big ones. Yeah. You know, like the Call of Duties and Half the Battlefields Life and Mario and wait, those guys don't. Wait, talk. those yeah. guys <laughs> don't. <laughs> well, you never know. Nice, nice try there. Yeah. Wait, somebody has to go Yahoo, you know, for Mario at the Actually, very least. Yeah, that guy has been doing that Mario voice. Like, he originally recorded it for Nintendo 64, I believe. Yeah. And he's been doing that Mario voice ever since. Yeah. Yeah. But he did a great good job, job, man. Great <laughs> job, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's that's where we're going to see the issues. And the problem is, if Nolan North's in there, if we, you know all games are put on yeah. hold anyways, because Nolan North does, like, Every voice, practically. Yeah, the big Pretty ones. Much, Nolan yeah. North, uh, Steve Bloom, and Jennifer Hale, basically. And mm. there's one other. I know there's one other. I keep on forgetting his name. But, yeah, you hear them all the time everywhere. And if any of them are involved in this, then, yeah, a lot of games are going to end up being affected. Was it da- Was it David Hayter? No, Hayter's always done, basically, the the snake voice. Yeah, but so I... So he's pretty well known for that. I don't know if he's really done anything else. Most of the time, most people confuse Steam Bloom's performances for Hater because they're kind of similar. similar. I can see that. But there's one guy that always gets mistaken for Nolan North. And that's Nolan North. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so, but I can't, I can't ever remember. But he's the one who's, who's credited with basically saying, if you want to get a job in voice acting, you buy a nice microphone and then you wait for me and Nolan North to die. Right. Because we get all of the <laughs> contracts. And then you wait for us to die. <laughs> Well, uh, speaking of other things in the industry that you know that take with a slight grain of salt, uh, Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go back to that here real quick. Ah, the another, best system ever. Another thing. Did you we're see that? Are you gonna talk about where where they came out with none of this on this video is right? Uh, or yes, true or no. whatever. Yeah, basically they um, they do they do kind of try to single out the whole Skyrim footage that everybody was excited about. Yeah, because yeah, playing Skyrim on a Nintendo console of all things. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah, because I mean, the community came back and the pessimists go Skyrim on the Nintendo. Bethesda would never agree to that. Mm. Oh no, that has to be fake footage and everything like that. And Which, okay. Number one, you're being a dick there because a developer wants to put its product out on every system that they can. If Skyrim could put, if Bethesda could put Skyrim on an Android, they would do it. Well, I think, okay, maybe it was Nintendo would never allow that because of blood and guts and other things. And I don't remember it being particularly bloody unless you got to like the kill cams with the the dragons and stuff like that. Maybe like, that you got the you got the whole blood decal thing where they just kind of like appear and like a little splat would suddenly appear on a texture somewhere. But, but then you have the mods. Oh yeah, the well, mods. They wouldn't really allow mods. Yeah, they wouldn't definitely wouldn't allow uh, the not mods on the Switch. No, they're going to probably allow it on the on the next gen consoles with the enhanced edition that's coming out. But I've seen comparisons between the enhanced out. edition and mods. Yeah. I've seen the comparisons between Enhanced Edition and actual mods on the PC, and the PC mods kind of blow it out of the water, really. Well, so. the thing is, is I mean, Nintendo's always been kind of family and kid oriented, and so you know, something like Skyrim doesn't exactly fit into that, especially when you can kill kids. Um, one word for you: bayonetta. Bayonetta. Yeah, that got a Wii. Re- that got a Wii release. That's true. Yeah, and it got a Wii exclusive with yeah. the Wii U. And no more heroes. Yeah, that was true. insanely bloody. Yes, um, and weird and sexualized. And so Nintendo's kind of been trying to break out of that hole. We're just a fluffy, we're just a fluffy family, kids company nope. because you know the gamers grew up and they needed they needed to stay relevant for the 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 whole of the gaming public to stay as a console. So I don't think that would be a good creation. excuse. That's that's true, you mm-hmm. know, when you're actually looking at this property. But I'm saying these are some of the arguments against it. Yeah. I mean, granted, I own No More Heroes. I like No More Heroes. And it's that's the sort of game that made the Wii worth playing because it was different and it was good and it wasn't just Mario Party and Smash Brothers and I can swing Zelda sword. Woo. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Link, before I get in trouble. Over right? <laughs> I'm like, Zelda? Yeah. I mean, oh that's, that's kind of cool. Is it like the alternate universe where she saves Link? Right. My, my, my attention span just bounced right off of that mistake because I just wasn't, wasn't even going to yeah. acknowledge it. Like, you're, yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. just like, slap! <laughs> <laughs> but, but in regards to this whole Skyrim thing, um, so 
It has not been confirmed, but they're being a little cheeky about this because when they were when Bethesda was asked about it, they said we're happy to have had the opportunity to collaborate with Nintendo on the video. While we are not confirming any specific titles at this time, we are pleased to announce our partnership with Nintendo in support of the Switch. So that would be kind of cool. Not going to say, but it'll probably be glitchy, just like any other Bethesda game. We have glitches now. <laughs> You know, I don't know. <laughs> Just I've, on the Nintendo. I've never really seen any specs, like actual verified specs for the, for the Switch, other than you saying it's basically a shield. It's the next generation of the Shield. It's of the, the shield. next shield. Yeah. So, you know, NVIDIA capability, um, sort of like, I guess, current, maybe past generation console equality. You're, you're going to probably, I mean, look, yeah. if Skyrim came out five years ago, mm-hmm. okay, I'm pretty sure they can get the handheld technology from a console that is over five years old because this game was running on the 360s yeah. and it was running on the uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 3? 3s. I'm pretty sure at this point we can probably get that into a handheld device. So I'm yeah, not saying... So, well, Sony managed to put Borderlands 2 on the Vita. Yeah. And, much, yeah. and, they, and that, that was a straight port. Like The only thing they had to cut out was no four-player. It was only two-player. So Yeah, so this is a high-probability thing that could happen. And as much as people are out there going... Oh, you can't run Skyrim on this thing. It's like, no, you're being super pessimistic at this point. And sure, it was a gameplay type demo thing. And some of it was kind of unrealistic and should be taken a little bit with a grain of salt. But companies have been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, trust me. Um, it's already They've already slated it for a January release. They say January 12th currently. But that could change as things usually do. As we get closer and closer to January, though, we're going to hear more and more about what exactly is going on. And while Bethesda might not be putting Skyrim on the Switch, I do. they do say that they're working with Nintendo. So there's, you're going to see some sort of Bethesda content coming out for the Switch. Yeah, and I think, I think that's where a lot of this came from. Is people are like, no, no, Bethesda would never work with Nintendo. And that's no. March, right? Not January. No, it's January. January. They, they've actually updated here very, oh, very nice. like yeah. within the last day or two to say... January 12th. January 12th, yeah. yeah. But that's cool. subject to changes. Most of everything course, is. always. And um, I think there might actually be some system specs that they're starting to talk about, too, now, finally. But, gosh, who knows? I, I know they were talking about they underplayed the amount of sales on this thing. Like, they're expecting low sales. Yeah. So, But that's because, I mean... Because the last two systems yeah, the last were two crap. Things, like, the Wii didn't get the, very much attention, I said for, aside for when the novelty was fresh. And as soon as that wore off, they, the only time they ever got attention was when they released games that didn't use motion controls very much. And then the Wii U, I never even bothered. Like, that was, I mean, they were really concentrating, uh, aside from the Bayonetta release, they were really kind of concentrating on kids and teens, and I was kind of in the whole, I'm too grown up for this shit kind of thing. Though I hear Splatoon was really, really awesome. And I wouldn't I wouldn't have minded being able to play it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Nintendo is always, I mean, the actual stuff that's been done in-house has usually always been really, really strong. Um for for their in-house IPs, but I hear that they've even talked about potentially farming some of those out too. Well, I had to give up on Nintendo consoles because of Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah, you well, were addicted. That, that, to that was that the game. ultimate thing. I, that was my addiction. The only way I could cut it was just get rid of the just Nintendo get rid console. Of it, yeah. Because, uh, and then I got Viva Pinata for the Xbox One, and I was like, it's happening again. So yeah. <laughs> here's an yeah, intro. Yeah. So in regards to specs, and this is going to go back to why it's feasible that we can actually have Skyrim. Um, even though there's a lot we don't know, the Switch's Tegra chip, uh, NVIDIA said it is based on the same GPU architecture as its top performing GeForce gaming graphics cards. This potentially means that we're looking at a 10 series GPU architecture inside that Switch. And anything that's in a 10,000 series for the GPU is going to just eat, uh, on low or medium resolution uh, Skyrim all day long and just not be and not have any problems with it. That'd be cool. So, you know, you're this quad Tegra and you're looking at, you know, something based off of 10 series graphics from NVIDIA. It becomes a lot more viable that this could happen. And especially since Bethesda has said they are partnering 
with Nintendo on this. And, I mean, the current generation of consoles has already proven that you cannot rely on exclusivity or try to limit the developers putting stuff out on your systems or limit the, the amount of stuff coming out on your systems anymore. Like, Nintendo did really hold to that whole, we're a family company, we don't release family games, we don't want anything with blood or swearing or violent, over, over, overt violence. Um, and that got them the Wii and the Wii U, and so I think now they're kind of basically accepting, okay, we need to come out with something fresh and novel and um, current, we need, and we need to be able to compete with current stuff, which is capable of basically playing every game the PC can play. Yeah, and with, the, within with the limitations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when even when the Nvidia Shield was out, uh, the first generation of it, even though it didn't get a lot of excitement, uh, they actually had a lot of uh, 3D World games on there that were actually pretty good looking that you could use with the controller because they had a specific controller for the Nvidia Shield. So you know, again, you know, all the poo pooers out there saying, "Oh no, this can't happen." We're you know, yeah, it can. We're, yeah, we're we're at a place now, technology wise, it can. It can. Yeah. So, hey, you know, I'm an old crotchety. <laughs> He's know, a PC master race. I'm an old crotchety millennial. You know, I'm gray beard by their standards, and even I'm still optimistic about this one. Yeah, I believe the term uh, we for us is dinosaur. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that? Mm, I, yeah. Didn't, I I didn't think that was a term nowadays. I thought it was gray beard millennials. Yeah. So you know how you were talking about wow. Wow. Oh God! World of Warcraft. Yes. Yes. There is a competitor that I believe is better than them, and I'm waiting for the new expansion to come out. Oh yeah. Final Fantasy 14. Of course. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's about eight million subscribers out there that would argue with you. Well, they're wrong. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad eight million people are wrong. <laughs> wrong. Okay, everybody. This is well, James. You know. <laughs> Hi. We, <laughs> that's how we end up with things thing such as anti-vaxxers. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't really hate World of Warcraft. I'm just, I'd prefer Final Fantasy now. And I'm excited for the new expansion that's going to come out in summer of 2017. So we're talking potentially. Oh, March. Something like that. Summer yeah. would be beyond March, usually. Oh, true. Okay. So, because that's spring. So you're talking nine months, six months? Yeah, six months away. Yeah. I'm excited because they're, they're talking about the new class, the dancer class. A dancer class? Yep. Or possibly a red mage. Well, they confirmed red they, mage. They confirmed the red they mage? They confirmed the red mage will okay. be there. I, that, that actually gets me interested again, because I like yeah. the red mage. The red the mage originals. is confirmed to be in there. And they had certain uh, analogs in the in the later Final Fantasy games before I ever really mm-hmm. went to the MMO. I never really was interested in that. Oh, but, I like the MMO. Um, I, I got a question. What's up? Does the, bans- does the dancer use a bow staff? Can't tell you. Can't tell you. Yeah. The the preview didn't the the way the the trailer looked it didn't really give you that hint. They, they, she actually to me looked more like a monk class, but they already have a monk class. But it's also the red suit. If you go look at the, the trailer, you say that's obviously the the dancer's suit from the game. Yeah, dancer mm-hmm. was a job. Yeah, in some of the earlier games. Yeah. So I like that they're they're paying attention to their roots mm-hmm. uh, and doing stuff to keep the because the people playing Final Fantasy game Final Fantasy Online or Fifteen or Final Fantasy fourteen. Fourteen online. Um, they're the they're the Final Fantasy fans. I can't really call myself a Final Fantasy fan because I've played like a couple, <laughs> three or four. That's cool. I want to say, and of those, I only liked two of them. Well, so. I'll tell you the reason why I like Final Fantasy above World of Warcraft. Okay. Now, I don't hate World of Warcraft because I played it for about ten years, so I can't really tell you that I hated that. I got him addicted to it. Okay. Yeah. So, All this, right. So <laughs> this is like saying you go drink a Pepsi when a Coke's not available. Is it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, Yeah, that's why I was like, yeah, yeah. Because then, Um, like, when I started pulling away from WoW, I went to all these free to play and other MMOs, and that's like me just like dropping trying to find something else, right? Store brand colas. Yeah, the the store brand brand, colas. Yeah, just trying to play something. (laughs) Uh, I'll try this, Mister Pib. Um, So the reason why I like it is because in World of Warcraft, all your classes and jobs, you have to have each individual character. A hunter, you have to roll a hunter character. You have to roll. Uh, this Death Knight, this uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, they're all jobs on one character, and you could switch. But I mean, you grant you have to level them up to level the max level, and then. But yeah, you have one character. You don't have to be like, oh, I have five characters. No, I just log on to one character, Can switch do my job, and then that go. Now, do you have to level up a character through every job? Yes. You so you have to yeah. basically have every job for people to even give you attention. Essentially, it's like, if oh, you're still leveling. Yeah, you're st- you're yeah. still low level on a healer. 
Yeah. But you, you're a high level tank. Let's take you as a tank. Mm-hmm. And then you work on your other one. Okay. So yeah, but you don't have to, if you want to just be a tank, you can just level the tank jobs. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you don't have to. I don't know. I don't really have the time nor the inclination because I have MMO a, anymore. I've already spent nine hundred yeah. hours close close to nine hundred hours on yeah. this game. Nope, nope, nope. It, oh, great for you. I'm glad you're excited. I'm glad you brought that to the show. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with MMOs. They're just not my. It's like uh, MOBAs. They're just not my kind of game. True. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good. It's good that they're uh, that since Final Fantasy has basically rebranded itself because it was a pile of steaming turd mm-hmm. when it first came out but when they did a realm oh, reborn 1.0 mm-hmm. yeah oh god 1.0 was ter- i couldn't even get into a- that that was when i was we were switching from coke to pepsi yeah because <laughs> i was trying it and i was like i can't do this like 1.0 was terrible yeah yeah didn't they issue a public apology for that or something yes. yeah they said the whole intro to reborn was just like that's them apologizing yeah <laughs> like, it's like well we're sorry and we'll do it right this time right well because yeah. they fired the guy who did it and they got um someone else who was good at it Mm-hmm. And he came in and saved it. He's a creator. Uh, he's the same person who was working on Final Fantasy XI, the online one of that one. That makes sense. Final Fantasy XI kind of established at least a world that was interesting to look at. Unfortunately, it was just at that point in time. I was like, I've got, wow, I don't have time for yeah. another yeah. MMO. Yeah, but A Realm Reborn was good. And then Heaven Sword was also good. Mm-hmm. So we're looking at the next one. Well, in regards right. to the well, MMOs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got something here? I got I got one thing I wanted to touch on just because I'm the guy who goes back and revisits stuff. Okay. Uh, this is weird because we don't really touch on it too much in last week's show, but we did cover it on Odd Man Out last week. Yes. And that is uh, Skyrim Enhanced Edition. Uh, we did say that mods are going to be available on the next-gen consoles. It is out now and mods mm-hmm. are modding abilities of that. But they say that the mods are limited to 5 gigabytes on the Xbox One and 1 gigabyte on the PS4. So any mod larger than that isn't going to be available on those consoles. This is when you say PC Master Race. Well, even... Okay, no, I did <laughs> No, this is when you say I, PC Master Race. I kind of don't in this one either. Why? Because apparently they've been having some problems with the Skyrim Special Edition with the mods on for PC? it. Because, yeah, because there, there's basically your Skyrim remastered and now they have the Skyrim Special Edition or something like that. Yeah. And apparently there's been some issues with the mods coming over to the special edition. If you have a save game in the remaster, it just doesn't come over properly to the special edition because of the mods. And the mods just don't come over automatically. So you have to basically start from scratch with the special edition if you've had your previous game modded. Which is like, oh no, I have to play Skyrim again. I have to spend (laughs) more hours... Uh, did you see the comic strip I found of it? Um, mm. I posted it where it shows, man, I've seen some stuff. This one guy came in, his face just kept changing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's the intro it's, guy for Skyrim. Well, <laughs> he just kept changing races and yeah, colors within seconds. Is, I've seen some shit. Yeah, but that that's a play off the other comic from the start of Fallout 4 where the wife's like, okay, are you ready for your speech, honey? And just saw him slurp, 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 like through different ones. And she that's finally true. shoots him in the back of the head. Yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, man. So that that was just basically the the last bit I wanted to touch on is yes, there's some limitations here. It makes sense, but thinking about these consoles and their their own limitations, exactly. You don't um, want too much on there. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to have a, a mod come in and break the game on a console where it could possibly well, do yeah, some break real the damage. system. Yeah, whereas a computer kind of can handle. I've never seen a mod actually break the system on a computer. If you are breaking your computer with a freaking mod. It's not just a mod. It's usually combinations of yeah. mods. Because, you know, everybody's got to have the He's key sword from Kingdom Hearts and Thomas the Tank Engine replacing the dragons. and. So my friend's yeah. ex-husband would spend hours modding a game. I'm pretty sure he could do exactly what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Do something wrong and hose his computer. Look, if you manage to actually hose your computer from modding, you... No. You just need... <laughs> <laughs> you look at him, he's all... Eh, Nothing's... Eh. Yeah. Nothing's impossible. Yeah. And trust me, if anybody's going to do it, a million Somewhere monkeys out there, and a million someone's going writers, yeah. Challenge accepted. Yeah, basically. Well, I, I, I'm just saying, though, it's like if you if you actually do that, you do not deserve to have your computer in the first place because that is just ridiculous. If you can actually break your computer so your computer's inoperable as you are, all are both. No, what we're saying is the console systems would be inoperable. A computer, you just easily open yeah, it up you and can fix it. fix man. it on a computer. Yeah. I mean, you could do the same thing with the console, but you'd have to ship it in and have them do it because most if, people don't know how to do that. Yeah, but if you manage to brick either one of them, essentially, to some point where it has to be repaired at a PC shop, because you have to remember, there are lots of people nowadays that don't understand what they are 
doing with the operating system. If they can't put in a little happy disk, they have to take it down to a PC sh- PC shop to get it re- well, redone. Usually, disc. usually when they use a disk, they're usually crying because they spent too much money on it. <laughs> a, a disk? I know, right? A disk. They still come. They still this? come with DVDs. Yeah, they still they still release DVDs. No, those and are stuff just like for that. show. There's still some physical yeah. releases out there, but usually you pop in a physical release of, of a current a current title on a PC, and it goes, "Oh, okay, we'll go to your Steam and download it for you." Right? We're yeah. downloading like the, the disk here is just special features. But I'm, I'm talking I'm, I'm talking in regards to the <laughs> entire just the, the entire system. I'm talking about the entire system itself, like the operating system. I will admit. Yeah, um, I, it was just basically a jab. It was being I was being exaggerating, but you were going on such a great tear. Though. I understand. So we had to jab. Yeah. It. Now, it's, yeah. So the uh, switch is coming out in January. January twelfth. Cool. I don't have to worry about decisions. Yeah. Because mm. the the Final Fantasy fourteen expansion is coming out later. March. Yes. So far. Because well, okay, what? Yeah, you said summer, right? Yeah. So that's so, summer so two thousand seventeen. March, March usually because early spring. Summer. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah, summer. 2017. So I would have had to made a decision on which to choose. Yeah. I'd have been like, do I want the uh, the Nintendo system or do I want an expansion? Nah, there, now there's no choice. Because oh. if there was a decision to be made, it would be Final Fantasy. Well, Sorry. Uh, so the thing I've got, the shiny wait, 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 wait. I got one for you, oh, James. No. Okay. So with this new Nintendo Switch, mm-hmm. that's such a wonderful system, very powerful. Mm-hmm. And we already know that the Final Fantasy... 14 or Final Fantasy 14 exists also on the consoles. Mm-hmm. If they released Final Fantasy 14 on the Switch, would you keep playing it on the PC or would you switch over to playing it on the Switch? PC Master Race, dude. Sorry. Okay. Because my you, graphics you card is it. amazing, dude. I'm sorry. I can't. I mean, it's much. It, it, the, it is going to be the new shield. That's awesome. And it's going to be the 10 series. But I did build my computer for a specific reason. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the trouble with being six hundred hours of reason. Yeah. So the trouble with being techs uh, like us is we don't really acknowledge the fact that there are probably households and people out there who can only really—it's not a matter of being able to afford, but they can only really understand one or the other. And so yeah, one of these exactly. things. And so yeah, they like the idea of getting some sort of physical release, popping in a disc, going through the necessary updates that's become a horrible part of gaming culture these days, and then playing a game with zero real problem from that point onward oh, yeah because i used yeah. i used to be a console person and then i switched to pc master race you want to know when that happened when the dreamcast died <laughs> the green the dreamcast was dead on arrival sir exactly yeah. and when the dreamcast was there i was like and i'm switching to computer yeah so and very i don't i don't think i ever really i've been kind of fluid through both thus far mm-hmm. uh though i do prefer a pc just for the fact that it can play a lot more yeah and you can do a lot more modern. whatever generation console you have mm-hmm. if you know how to operate a pc you can make it play every single old game and let except for the you know with enough effort you can probably play the ones that were based on processor speed even the games that you needed turbo oh, buttons for yeah. back in the day yeah um but these days you spend six thousand dollars and you can get a game. You can get a PC that does some amazing stuff. Uh, if you're spending six thousand dollars on a PC, <laughs> you need to be drug out in the middle of the road and shot. Or you're buying the twenty-one inch, uh, was it curve monitor laptop with two 1080 video cards inside it? That wasn't. That wasn't even six thousand yeah, dollars. It was or, five thousand. Know, a, it was five thousand uh, different than six thousand. Okay. Or you know a. a Top of the line, uh, new Surface desktop and oh, the desktop that. to go on it. Oh. You know? oh. <laughs> Back in my day. That's all so, we just did just now. You yeah. guys realize that, right? Yeah. So right. that so the Surface the, the Microsoft Surface, Surface Studio that it looks amazing. Is that what they're calling it? The studio? Yeah, it's studio. Surface studio. Studio. I thought it was a Surface Desktop. Nope. Studio. Okay. No, the official name of it is the Microsoft Surface Studio. It is a desktop computer. It is a desktop computer with a twenty one inch display that has a higher resolution than four K touch screen. And it is uh, running still an i7 processor. I think it's the newer ones. I5 and an i7. Who yeah. Ca- so there are there are different there are different levels that you can. Yeah, because the i5 is a um, one terabyte hard drive space, eight gigabytes of memory, and that runs at two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Then you have the next model up, which is a one terabyte hard drive space i7, uh, sixteen gigabytes. And that one is roughly about three thousand five hundred. Uh huh. Um, three thousand four hundred ninety nine, three thousand five hundred. And then you have the max one, which is um, basically i seven thirty two gigabytes and two terabytes of hard drive space, 
I hope those are solid states. And they're actually not. No, that's the thing. That's stupid. They're a rapid hybrid drive. It so would be even more expensive with that. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That, yeah, no, no, you can get a two. You can get a uh, two terabyte solid state hard drive for like two fifty. No, no, no. Way. My you friend can, just bought one not long ago. I'm calling bullshit. Or is it one yeah, terabyte? I, one terabyte. Sorry. Yeah, one you, terabyte. You, you show me a store page that actually offers that, and I'll show you some place from China that's really jipping you out of a lot of money. Yeah. Like, awesome. yeah. <laughs> that two terabyte drive is going to be filled one with One terabyte, rocks. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Or it's going to be filled with malware. So one, <laughs> yeah. one terabyte but anyways. is going to be, yeah, 300-ish. I'll say exactly. that. Okay. But that's still driving up the price versus the hybrid drives. And- you're looking at these systems. Um, the big thing here really is that 28 inch touchscreen display. That 21? is 21, 28. Yeah. Oh, oh, you said 21 earlier. So yeah, 28. It's, it's the it's a touchscreen multi-touch display Pit with pixel sense technology, and it can lower flat onto a surface. Almost, you know, like you can angle it down. It almost seems like you can. It's not just one or the other, up or down. You mm -hmm. can actually stop at any level along the way. Yes. Yep. And work at any angle that's proper for you. Yeah. Exactly. And you can go all the way down to basically a drawing type easel thing mm -hmm. on it. But it looks amazing. And that little t uh, d dial, that dial thing is awesome. But it's probably purchased separately. So uh, Surface Dial is going to be a ninety nine dollar yep peripheral. Uh, but if you pre order, pre order, you get that thrown in. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, the dial itself is going to be something that's sold separate, as is probably the uh, keyboard and mouse. Yeah, the keyboard uh, and mouse are going to be separate. Well, they have two different types of keyboards. They have the Ergo and the standard one that looks like an Apple keyboard. Yeah, and it looks like everything is supposed to be this kind of like wireless, which has been the kind of way that the future is just making sure everything, no wires. It's all Bluetooth. Um, it? Oh, yeah. then that will not fly at my job. Nope. It's, <laughs> it's all Bluetooth. It's all Bluetooth 4.1. Wow. Uh, so you so you get the surface pen, you know, there's a surface dial, there's a surface ergonomic keyboard. And this is crazy because you look at this thing, it's basically a piece of like the machined aluminum, like the the uh it is the max and it does the wave thing with it. So too. that yeah. means uh the actual computer must be at that lower base part right there. Yeah. You have to be because yeah. that thin, no, you can't so put that's, all you know, by by the pictures that I've been seeing, it looks like that it does the pl the base is where at least the power goes the power supply at least. yeah because i'm seeing a power and at least a port on the back of okay. course i'm not put looking up like actual spec yeah probably it's, like the uh, system so ports down there maybe it, it's probably is because i mean you have four usb ports down there you have uh your your no oh, definitely if it's the usb ports yeah, yeah. it's the system yeah. board so yeah. is it like a micro system board or that's no idea i haven't been able to crack one yet do you think microsoft's <laughs> going to send one to me and let me open it that Hell would be awesome no. microsoft we, we do unboxings we do unboxings yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> talk about shameless self-plugging yeah. there yeah. Okay. hey yes. me. we do unboxings yeah. hey, if it gets me the ability to work with one of these machines oh, this even thing, for a, a short I amount know. of time i would do it i mean so the thing about the bluetooth yeah yeah um because the range used to be 30 feet the range now on a Bluetooth device is now 100 and mm. 150. Yes. So the other interesting thing that I'm noticing here from the specs is it has the Xbox wireless built in. Yes, so it you can, does. You can pair your, Microsoft. your yeah. Xbox One controller, <laughs> probably your 360 controller, straight yes. in. Or your Xbox One controller. Yeah. Well, I said yeah. one first, but yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and it, the big thing is, okay, so pixel sense. This is important. Mm-hmm. So apparently they're using a newer technology with this, and this is actually the screen resolution is going to be uh, 40, 40, 40 something, 4,500 mm -hmm. by 3,000. That's amazing. Yeah, that is higher than 4K resolution. That, that sounds. Can I just buy the monitor and hook my so use that as my computer monitor? That sounds like something on a professional level. It does really like they're trying to basically. It sounds like what they're trying to do is bring something like the HP Z1. Remember we were drooling over that back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, the, man. Mo the super modular workstation computer, the all in one. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that I, all in one. But the one I that actually you could, got like, to open that thing, like the one that you can take pieces out and swap mm -hmm. stuff out and yep. upgrade it and everything like that. We were drooling over that, and that was yeah. basically kind of what this is, with some better stuff. It's it's the next it's the next iteration, the next step, and it's consumer level. But yeah, it's yeah. professional level. Professional level. Pro I mean, those, if you if you have five thousand dollars to blow away, it could be consumer level. Here, here's, some people have mortgages. Yeah. yeah. Here, <laughs> here's the thing is is if anything, if this is more prosumer or professional level. Um, it is you know it 
you can't do any upgrades on it. This is going down the Mac routes. Microsoft has, shake, has taken the Mac route with a lot of this stuff. When it's just done, it's throw it in the trash and start over. It has, um, now, it does have NVIDIA graphics in it and all these mm -hmm. models, but we're not talking the latest 10 series. Uh, your starting model has a 965 mobile NVIDIA card mm -hmm. with two gigabytes of memory. The top end one has the 980 mobile with four gigs of memory. You have to get into the top end one, even have one with, you know, the 980 even in it, you know, but they are at least, but six. you don't need anything more than that, to be honest. Not right. Well, right now, not right now, not yeah. right now, but, the, but the purpose of this isn't for gaming. <sighs> True. Xbox wireless built in. That's kind of, yeah. Unless you use your Xbox controller for some professional capacity. Well, you can use it for casual games, like, you know, like Clash of Clans or something. You spend $5,000 on a computer to play Clash of Clans. You need drug out into the street yeah. and shot. You're not you're, buying it for you're the... You're going to be the first one against the wall when the revolution comes. <laughs> you're not you're like, buying this. You're, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Hey, guys, I got this really great computer. It cost me $6,000. Well, really, what do you play? Bejeweled 3. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like Bejeweled. You. I do. You can go in the corner with the solitaire but player played, over there. I played Bejeweled perfectly fine on this old Surface but Pro no, 2. No one's gonna, no one's buying this device for the Xbox controller feature. I'm glad they threw it in there. That's amazing. Yeah. No one cares. <laughs> People care about the fact that it has the pixel option there. It has that little dial that, if you watch the video, that thing is amazing. It's, it's going smoothly. That's why they buy it. They don't buy it for oh no. We all know we're going to put an Xbox controller option in there. It's Microsoft. So, hell, if they made toilets, they'd have it sync up with the Microsoft controller. Do, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> do you remember back in the day when we would get, like, Nerf commercials or laser tag commercials yeah. and stuff like that? Or see the kids doing these really awesome things with um, action figures and things like that? Yeah. And it kind of looked really cool, and that's kind of like how we tried to play with the toys, and it never really worked like that. Of course. And then it, you get the revelation later on in life that they actually did take after take after take. And some in some cases, the kids had already gone home, and they were just sitting there throwing things, like throwing these toys at each other or something like that, mm -hmm. um, just to get those shots, just to make it look like. And then some editor, some really creative editor, um, put all that stuff together. Uh, so what's to say that advertising in general is not that? So they could have put that dial on there. They could have been using the pen on it. They could have been lowering it down and having it switch all seamlessly like that, perfectly fine. But that's not. I'm not going to believe that that's how it works for six months of use, one month of use, one day's worth that's of use. That's true. It's not. It's, I don't think it's going to be that level. It's going to be stuck in one position all the time. <laughs> yeah, because no one's like, not going to be wanting to go. Where's, uh -huh. where's the dust going to build up on this? How oh, easy yeah. is it going to be to wash the fingerprints off? Um, because you know that if, there's that one guy. Yeah, what happens if you spill something or the kid throws something at it or something like that? Like these, these are the things. What happens if you get mad and throw yeah, it? Yeah, I know, right? Actually, I haven't really thrown electronics because not, they're not all you. expensive these days. I know, right? They're, they're too expensive. I like the idea of having a phone I could throw. Just, just a phone, not even an activated one. Just having a phone in my pocket. So when I got pissed off, I could just pull out that phone and throw and just watch it break into pieces. Get a Nokia. No, they don't break. Exactly. They ricochet so back you... and kill you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Find you on the ground with a phone sticking out of your head. So, well, yeah, Surface Studio has already got uh, 5,000 likes on Facebook. Of course. Of course. It's pretty. Everyone likes the Surface. They're getting the all Surface they're... 3 and 4 and the book are pretty good. They're so, getting all the Mac people. I'm remembering, yeah. Good. I'd rather this... have them go here than the Mac. I'm remembering this form factor with then this kind of uh, thing with the iMac and the eMac. Oh, you mean you the know, thing like I got thing over there? Yeah, yeah, the thing I got that, sitting that over I, there that I crop out of the shot for the show now. Yeah, right, that, right, right, that right. ancient <laughs> technology from back in the days when dinosaurs roamed the yeah. earth. But this, you know, the thing about it was it was the time of the encapsulated thing, and we already have all in ones coming from the likes of Asus and and, and HP and stuff like that. Well, see, this doesn't have a, a, a anything higher than a 980 in it. And, it, and this had this this had the. Um, soap bar mouse and the special yeah that that and, mouse bought that oh that mouse was yeah, so that terrible thing. Uh, but look at it look at it now like you saw it's all smudged and things look like he picked it up out of the landfill and no that just sat in a house somewhere so this isn't very white anymore yeah it's not i mean you could probably clean it up really good if i you get really what you take mean care of that kind of stuff so i totally get what you, you mean. know the thing about it is this is the same thing it's novelty and the novelty will wear off and it'll just be another all-in-one computer Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just a very expensive one. I'm actually kind of happy that HP has uh, innovated the way for all-in-ones. 
because with that Z1, the way they set it up, everyone's going that route. Even yeah. Dell's going that route because it's easier to maintain it. What are you talking about? HP innovated the route for all in ones. The way they set up the Z1. Well, they were the first they person have, who they said that. They may have that. revolutionized it with the modularity. Yeah, the modularity on yeah. the Z1. Okay. There's no modularity in the Surface Studio. No. I know, but he but he just made a comment that eventually it will be an all-in-one computer, and I say to eh, no, this yeah. is this is essentially an all-in-one computer, yeah. especially because they're taking advantage of the fact that nobody's really using drives anymore. Hard drives, sure. Nobody's using disk drives. If they do, they're they're peripheral. At best. Are their names Harrison? No, I mean, if you're a tech, you want to have a drive to be able to use stuff. But even then, it's just going to be a drive on a USB co- cable. I, I will flat out admit that that majority of people don't need a USB drive, but you should have one. Oh, good. I'm glad you decided to throw that away, sir. Yeah. Um, but, no, you should still have an external CD drive, but 90% of the people don't need them because, I mean, if it doesn't work... You know, and you can't get it off the internet because internet's everywhere. Then you probably don't need an actual disk drive. Everything nowadays is direct download. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the the optical drive is only around or, really for or even then, emergency purposes. Yeah, even then USB sticks are starting to take over as far a form of interface, bootable, yes. bootable or otherwise. Um, so essentially, with the drives gone from these devices, they're just going to continue to get smaller and, and different form factor than your usual big box computer because one of the things that influenced the size and shape of those big box computers was the need for the drives and, their, and needing to have them accessible on front of the machine. machine. Yeah. And that slowly just kind of went away because nobody really needs that stuff anymore. Exactly. Do yeah. you know something from the Microsoft Surface Studio pictures? What's that? There are no ports on the front of this device. They are Good. all on the back mm-hmm. you don't really need them on the front all the usb ports are on the back too it's supposed to Good. imply um a clean web, yeah it's supposed to be a, this clean sort of magical box is what i think they're really going for here is it's just this magical plane of glass that displays stuff and does stuff and you don't really need to interface with it too much you say magical at least one more time and you're going to resurrect the <laughs> ghost of, of uh, steve jobs there yeah i know okay uh, it's okay. It's not Beetlejuice. It's because you can say it's it magical. Twice. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> he said it once. That's fine. All right. Yeah. Well, thinking of things that are not magical, mm-hmm. um, we have new PlayStation 4 bundles. And one of our favorite drama stories is yeah. part of the bundles. Anybody really? want to guess which one? Let me guess. <laughs> yeah. No Man's Sky. Man. Yes. Talk about a name that if you evoke too many times, right? Sean Murray's going to show up and lie through his teeth at you. Uh, well, he, he'll, <laughs> no, he'll just post a tweet saying something else. Sorry, I'm just quoting internet sense, uh, internet or, sentiment there. Or he will post an odd tweet about saying No Man's Sky was a mistake. Yeah, No Man's <laughs> Sky was a Sean mistake. Was Sean Murray's account that, that posted that? It was Sean Murray's account and Hello Games' account. It was Hello Games' account that did. Sean Murray's account says something too later on. Uh, Sean Murray says server hacked. We're bringing Mr. Robot episodes or we're binging Mr. Robot episodes as quickly as we can looking for answers. Uh, episode zero five is a cracker. If anything was a mistake, it was using linked LinkedIn without two FA. Yeah. It's just some weird stuff. Started going up on Sean Murray's account mm-hmm. after the hello games account tweeted out. No man's sky was a mistake. And that is that is literally the tweet, word for word. Yeah. No man's sky was a mistake. And then they took they took it down and blocked it and went that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You didn't yeah. see that. And then uh, someone else came in. Nope, nope. That's for me. Nope, nope. You didn't see that either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's some weird stuff going on there. I mean, yeah. but well, didn't they spontaneously disappear for a little bit at one point? Like nobody could reach them, and they weren't even in their offices or anything like that. There was there was speculation. I didn't see any actual news reports, but you know, there was. Uh, I, I was hearing people saying like. The no the the Hello Games people, which is like sixteen developers basically, mm-hmm. were like they were just like they were not not at their offices. It's like the whole office shut down. It's like nobody was there. It's like they took their money, ran off to hearsay and you know gossip some, and stuff. Some, some little other island, state. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ran off some little island somewhere in the Caribbean. Look, okay, No Man's Sky wasn't the game that they promised. That much is true. They've, we've gone through. There's enough. There's enough evidence on the internet to say that that's 
That is not what you promised, good sir. But, you know, hearing the legacy and everything that goes on to it, I think that they did the best with what they had and that they really should have stuck with that and dropped the price point and tried to build up a player base instead of just launching it with, like, the whole, yes, it's great, it's just what we said it was going to be. Yeah, It does what it says on the tin. That wasn't the case. They still pushed out an update for it. I saw, I had an update a couple days ago on Steam. Mm -hmm. But, again, Cryptic patch notes or whatnot don't you know, know what's going on i wouldn't pay on. 60 bucks for it if they were like yeah here get it for 20 i'd be like all right cool maybe 20 but i'm, I'm holding can... on to it with the idea that i'm going to go back in a year yeah and and look it up and open it up and see if it's in any way developed into anything like they said it was going to be or i'm waiting until the day they say oh well we're just going to shut down the servers but right now it you can um they're they're releasing new bundles of no Man's Sky. So basically, the holiday season PlayStation 4, you're going to be able to get uh, No Man's Sky mm-hmm. in, what, basically three or four different bundles. So you, too, can be a disappointing present to your family and well, friends. So <laughs> <laughs> here, No Man's Sky. The holiday bundle thing is, I mean, they're always kind of struggling to try and come up with stuff to put in there that isn't, you know, going to hurt their sales of the actual popular titles at the time. They don't want to mm-hmm. really put a holiday release in there unless they're charging for a holiday release on the bundle. Um, now, No Man's Sky being put in there, well, they didn't make an agreement to put No Man's Sky on the console. The No Man's Sky has released on the console. It is actually much cheaper on the console. Yeah, it is than actually. Retail a, release. It's kind of weird. Um, really? Yes. Yeah, it is because I just saw $40. one over at, the, yeah, for 40 bucks. Yeah. It's already down to 40 is it's what you're saying. It's already down to 40 um, So they basically have to make do with what they've got. They have this thing and they need to put it out there. And they need to establish some form of player base for it to keep it relevant because they're probably running their own server of No Man's Sky. So they need to keep that server running. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, and, and recoup some of their investment. It's like what? Right yeah. now it's like uh, one of the bundles is Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Uncharted 4, yeah. and we're going to sneak No Man's yeah, Sky in there too. No Man's Sky. Go, yeah. go you play that. Awesome game, awesome game, and herpes. Here's the game, here's the game you put on <laughs> for the cousins that are over and you don't want them like scratching your other discs. Like... You go ahead and play this game. Yeah, you buy Call of Duty. You buy it for Call of Duty Black Ops Three for yourself, and mm-hmm. then you let the kids play No Man's Sky. Yeah, it, mm, yes. you know that's how it works. And You're a player too. Let me yeah. unplug the controller. Yeah, No Man's Sky is basically just kind of that game that you just sort of—it's a time sink. You waste a lot of time in it, and it's—it's it's still very fun. I had a lot of time, uh, fun figuring it out and, and basically realizing that every planet you went to was the same stuff, basically randomly rolled together in lumpier ways lumpier yeah. lumpier hmm. yeah like uh, okay. after after that after like the the you know 18th jump into a system where i'm like i don't want to land on any of these planets i've got fuel i've got a really great engine i'll just jump two more jumps down the line and go this much further and hopefully hit a you know what's that thing the i can't even remember what they're called anymore the next storyline bit mm-hmm Hmm. Um, which is basically just showing up at something cryptic. Oh, yeah. those, yeah, yeah those, those things. things. So you just show up in something cryptic, and it goes, it's, I'm going to point you in another random direction and slap you on the bum and send you on your way. And it's like, so after a while, it's like I have no agency. I have no real reason to go do anything. I've got a ship that's massively upgraded. I've got a multi-tool that's massively upgraded. I have completely maxed out the inventory on my suit. I can carry more on my suit than 10 ships. And... And still, there's just kind of like, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm like, what's the point? There's no there's no indication of where we're going or what we're doing. And nobody's kind of like, dang, nobody's dangling the carrot in front of your thing. At, the carrot's at the center of the universe and you're on the edge. Yeah. And after a while, you lose sight of that kind of thing. Well, I, there's still a lot of tech, technical marvel in there that needs to be fleshed out better. But, you know, there is a lot and that now, made, made the game, you know, a technology mar- marvel. And now there are more competitors coming out with actually delivering on the promises that they made and stuff like that, as far as I can tell. So stuff like Star Citizen is a online space MMO with jumping and planet, planet Watch and everything like that. Star Citizen's been around, though, before No Man's Sky. So um, Elite Dangerous is releasing their next update. They're in the middle of their update cycle, so they've got two more after this expansions, basically. Okay. But it's you know part of a season pass sort of DLC kind of thing, and on top of Planetfall, now you can drive vehicles around on the planets and things like that. Hmm. Um, so it's getting slower, slowly more and more like an exploration kind of thing. And then there was one other that everybody's going nuts about a sandworm thing, and I can't remember the name of a it. A sandworm thing? Yeah, there's a sandworm, a... massive, massive thing. Is it called like, sandworm? No. Is it called Dune? No. It's it's something that the internet was going on going 
nuts about. Is a space engineer? No, it was not space engineer. Space engineer, you have these little crappy dogs that run up and nibble on your shit until it breaks. Like that's the only enemy I ever countered, and that was like that was annoying enough as it was. Let's see, is it Hearthstone? It's not Hearthstone. Hearthstone. I don't know what it was. I can't waste really? time looking it up. Either way, yeah. there are competitors out there. There are people who are coming out with stuff that is along the same lines. There's mm-hmm. stuff that's already been out that is along the same lines, and you know this is this is just becoming one of the more darker chapters of this whole genre that is establishing yeah. itself. This, this space exploration kind of thing. The redheaded stepchild. I don't know. I mean, Elite was a thing way, way, way long ago. That's true. Before you even had any graphics to imply what it was you were doing, really. Yeah, I mm-hmm. guess. Well, I can't think of anything else. You know, is there any other quick bits or anything that we need to hit? World of Final Fantasy will be launching soon for the PS4 and the BS Vita. Uh, uh, let's what, see. When you say soon, when? Probably not till summer <laughs> as well. Oh. See, what I see here, uh, Twitter is planning to cut more jobs. Oh, yeah, it's part of the whole Vine thing. Oh, yeah. um, so they're going to cut like 8% of their workforce, Twitter is. They are actually also being sued uh, for stock manipulation. Are they? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, after that whole thing about we're going to sell, no, nobody wants to buy us. Yeah. I knew that. We said that when we started reporting on this a while. Ago. Oh, yeah. Like, keep an eye on that. Yeah. Um, the other one was um, apparently Google Fiber lost its CEO. Google, the Google Fiber CEO has stepped down. They're actually cutting jobs there, mm-hmm. and they are slowing their rollout in big cities. Which is sad. That makes me sad. So, I'm World excited. of Final Fantasy, James, I know you want to say something about this. Go ahead and say it. It's coming out October 25th, <laughs> so 2016. It's, there we go. So, it's out. No, yeah. I haven't seen it. But it's out. World of Final Fantasy. Because October, because we're already past the 25th. See, can we buy it right now? So, yeah, that was that was the crazy thing is uh, Google Fiber's slowing down its rollouts and they're cutting their workforce and the C- CEO stepped down because they were apparently just being too aggressive with it. And so, you know, yeah, it's out now. Alphabet is working on trying to cut down on um, try to trim some of the so fat. Alphabet is this side business that sort of like grew out of Google or something like Alphabet that. Alphabet is Google now. Yeah. Alphabet is the umbrella corporation for all things Google. So it's like the Time Warner or the internet or something. Kind it's of. trying to be. Speaking of which, AT&T and Time Warner are trying to merge too for $80 billion. That's scary. Yeah, that's kind of scary. So yeah, big, big tech companies doing their moves and mergers mm-hmm. and stuff like that right now. And we're going to probably see this kind of thing continue on through the holidays. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but Twitter getting caught for getting under investigation for stock manipulation, like that was pretty obvious. You know that they that should, was, they're going to have to have some concrete evidence to the contrary. Yeah, that's yeah. ha ha. <laughs> that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, I think we got it. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been our odd man out for the week. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, do make sure to like, comment, subscribe, find us on VidMe, follow whichever way you want to do it. Uh, and I think that's it. Yep. Later. See you guys. Have a good one. Uh, requests to these places and just overwhelm them with these requests. And, uh, I saw a graphical representation of, two th- of a 2014 botnet attack and that was pointed from Russia.